Hey there guys and welcome back yet again to another episode of Donkey Kong 64 with Yumi. Good. You actually got you got your cue. I wasn't expecting that. I was gonna make fun of you. <laughs> oh well. Uh, so we are not where we left off last time. We were on the island because see that fairy over there? She crying. Yeah, something's wrong. She has seaweed coming out of her eyes. That's what's wrong. Uh, I would be crying too. I know. If you got seaweed stuck in your eyes, I'm, I've got seaweed stuck on my feet before when I've gone swimming. Look at the little fishies. Yeah, she can't see the fishies. That's why she's sad. But look at how those... Oh, does the, the music fades out in between the two things and it's just ambience. Oh, uh, yeah, that's cool. That's what I love about these 64 games. They're really awesome. Um, now, I want to see, does each character keep their own count of crystal coconuts? Oh, uh, no. We're I think full. we all have 20. Okay, so get the banana warp here. Also, I want to take a minute to appreciate this music. Feet Yumi breathing. Okay, <laughs> so uh, let's let's go. There's a headphones back there, I think. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Gotta get those headphones. Is there? Uh, it's a it's... golden banana, is what it is. Okay, so let's. Um, I did not expect we're gonna find a lot of golden bananas in this episode, you guys. We're gonna make up. Okay. There we go. Okay, we're gonna make up for not doing much last episode. Last episode we were really caught up and we were trying to learn the controls all over again because we hadn't played the game in like nine months. Yeah. Uh, anyway, dance. Tell me. Yay, okay. 19 is a pretty good number. By the way, did I uh, ever mention that I think that the feathers she shoots are Briegel feathers? Oh, that's, that's a fan theory. <laughs> Although a rather ominous one. I don't know, they don't have to be like the from a her hand motions right now. Yumi's <laughs> hand motions. There's she doesn't they have be, to be from a they could be like, <laughs> discarded, you know, that fall out after preening. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So yeah. True. Like shed beagle feathers. Yeah, yeah. Beagle. Okay. Beagle. I'm, not, I'm just gonna stop. Go in there. Beagle sub feathers. Okay, so this is the first time we've shown up. No, it's not. No, we've it's not. Okay. Fun. Sorry, but it's the first time this year. But we have to go into the crying fairy. And find a crying fairy. That's crying fairy reception. Oh, this place is beautiful. It is. Of course, what would you expect if this is a banana fairy island? There's the queen. And she's, she's very sad. sad. You know why? She has a banana on her head. Oh, that's right. Oh, I just don't know what to do. There was this huge tremor recently, and it scared my banana fairies so much that they panicked and flew away. I reward mean, anyone who manages to find them all and bring them back to me. Please help me, little one. She's just like, Calm down, Mrs. Fairy. My friends and I will look out for them on our adventure. Mrs. Fairy? She's like, yeah. married fairy. Oh, thank you, but I'm afraid you won't be able to simply grab them out of thin air. The only way to catch banana fairies is by trapping them inside a cage! <laughs> Here, take my magical camera. It already has some film in it. To activate the camera, press and hold Z, then press down C. To take a picture of the fairy, pressing B as a sign of our friendship, I'll now teach you and your friends a cool new dance move <laughs> that you can use on the floor to impress all your friends. I, that, that derailed, I can't even <laughs> <laughs> It can be useful for another thing hidden dinosaur bones. Unfortunately, it needs a crystal coconut to work, so use it wisely. And she gives it to us while crying. Now we are super powerful. Whoa. Yeah. Okay, I want you to look around this place a little bit. A little bit. Just just go around. You can touch the fire. Through the fire and the flames. Ooh, oh! I didn't- I don't think I've ever gone in here before. Well, they restore crystal coconuts. I love just every nook and cranny of this game has something in it. At one point, I want to show you off a glitch. I want to show you off a glitch. Yeah, okay. yeah, that one. There's some song about showing a girl off, but I'm not going to reference that. For goodness this is probably One Direction. And we don't need to go back into those dark no, days. No. Anyway, um, what was I going to say? Oh, I want to show you off a glitch. Where you can, with I think it's with Lanky, you can dive under... Um, DK Island and find the secret room. Oh, what am I doing? I can just warp. Ooh, uh, head back to Angry Aztec while I talk. Last week, we told the tale of the snake and the squeegee, and we said we'd update you on what happened with the toad. Well, this this tale has taken an interesting movie twist. A plot twist. A, it, I'm serious. I was not expecting this dramatic of a twist, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go in depth, and I'm gonna tell you this story while Yumi gets us back to where we were in Angry Aztec. 
So last week we left off when a snake had tried to eat our toad. I saved the toad, but we didn't know whether it was going to survive because the snake did have poison. And the toad had buried down and we had not seen it since. We, then we recorded the episode. We had set the snake near a stump and left it off there. So, uh, the next day after we recorded the episode, we went back to the window well to see the snake had found its way back and it looked fat. Oh, yeah. It looked stinking overweight. It looked obese. It was like... It, I'm... Never mind. And it, it was... <laughs> It was not pretty. It was not pretty. It was there hissing in the corner like, I have come back and I have triumphed and I have eaten all of your toads. This is for hitting me from before. <laughs> With a squeegee. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And I ran and I got my squeegee faster than ever before. Yeah. And I was like, this time, you're going to get real clean, snake. No. And so I, we put that s snake in a bucket faster than ever before because it had eaten all of our toads. At, we did not we, see any in there th at all. There were no survivors at this point. So we take the snake and um, I push it into the bucket real fast. It didn't take me any time. I was mad at the snake. And so I'm like, I'm going to cut its head off with a shovel. <laughs> and then Yumi was just like, no, we must spare the snake. <laughs> so you can head to Snides now. And I was just like, what? This is what it was like. Yeah, and it got me a coin. So anyway, no squawks, <laughs> you tail interrupter. Anyway, um, Yumi spared the snake's life. So basically what we decided is that, well, dad drived, he's going to drive. I would, uh, I would take, I would hold the snake in a bucket with cardboard over it and we would take it far out of town and we would dump it someplace that nobody would find it. So basically we went about four or five miles out of town. Maybe there was this little creek and these little woods next to it. I took the snake and I stinking hurled it into the woods. I took the bucket and I was like, mm, like a bale. And that snake flipped at least seven times in the air. <laughs> yeah. It, with, it, it was going to pay for this, basically. Um, anyway, then I came home and I, I rechecked the window well. And there was nothing there. Now they, we were very sad. We were. That made us very sad. Okay, so. And the number one way to get toads to come out, by the way, um, is to um, make it wet. So I took the hose and I sprayed all around just to see if they were like hiding and burying. Mm -hmm. None of them came out. So I was like, okay, we lost all the toads. So I was, I was distraught at this. I didn't, it's kind of like when your dog dies. I didn't expect it to be like that. Yeah, look at DK, that, he's getting it. I don't, I've never had a dog die, so it would probably be worse than I that. I have. Is it worse than that? Kind of. Yeah, because like the dog is more of your family. But even so, I wasn't expecting to feel sad at all, but I was kind of bummed because mm -hmm. my toads were gone. They were eaten by a stinking snake that looked like Dracula. <laughs> and so I was like, I was kind of bummed while I was doing the dishes. Then it, I got the idea late at night, about nine o'clock at night. I was just like, I'm going to go down and check again. So I go down and check again. What I find poking its head up from the dirt. The lone survivor, the toad that had been bit before and who had buried deep down to recover, had been deep underground the entire time the snake was there. And a couple hours after the water soaked down, it brought it back up and it rose. And it was like, I have triumphed over evil. Yes. And one week later at this point, it's still fine. The bite mark has worn off. It looks as good as new. And we're happy to say that we have one survivor and the snake is gone for good. The and one that got bitten survived. I, that's just deep. Yeah. Like the others were like, they oh. thought they were gonna be the survivors, but then it, it, in a twist of fate, the only one that went through the hardships was the one that was able to withstand the toughest times. Everything happens for a reason. Let's look at our bu prints. Bu, bu? But they're not blue. They're, they're yellow prints and red prints, but that doesn't sound as um, catchy. Okay, so. I love this beat, it's like It reminds me of the Pink Panther. Yeah, kind of. Because it has that jazzy kind but of. But then here's where he tries to infringe on DK's theme. Oh! See? <laughs> those horns in the background, you can't do that. Because that's Donkey Kong. Yeah, that's Donkey, Donkey Kong owns that. <laughs> so um, if you switch in the tag barrel to Tiny at this point, I think we also have her blueprint that we got earlier. We, we, came, out with a, we came out swinging. We're coming out swinging. With a bit of a plan in this episode, we have written down what golden bananas we want to get so we don't get sidetracked. This will be our third and it's only 10 minutes in. Which, I mean, if we kept going at that rate, we'd have a pretty nice LP. 
Yeah. But we're not going to keep going at that rate. That's what I need, Cog. I'm a little bit weird and a little bit <laughs> stinky, but that's what I need. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, ooh. He's good that I think every world has like a different animation. Yeah. Dog. Donkey Kong. Wow. So 21 golden bananas on the wall. 21 yeah, golden bananas. I got a purple print. Look at that. It's a flying saucer. <gasps> That's what so Cruel's using. Each like color goes in that row and then the other row is the worlds you get them in. Yeah, that's really cool. I love this plot twist. Rare was so detailed in their games. Um, so basically what we're gonna do now, I say so basically a lot, but just, just that's one word, it's basically. Yeah, and you just basically gotta, one word. It's basically one. So, what we're going to do is switch to Lanky, but Chrissy is, <laughs> you has not gotten that memo yet. Well, I wanted memo. to check to see if we even had the switches like we want. Oh, the switches, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Like yeah. And there's the bananas too, and a tag bear. Okay. Yeah, so get that watermelon on this bin on the sandy, sandy bottom. <laughs> we, we got like two watermelons a while back. We got a watermelon that tasted great. It tasted so good and it brought me back my childhood. And then we got another watermelon that did not taste great, and I don't know why. It was a bummer. Yeah, it was kind of like a weird texture. It, it tasted like a fuzzy watermelon. It wasn't moldy yet, but it just tasted like it had no flavor and a little bit... Ooh. Wow. <laughs> and a little bit too much fuzz. Yeah. Me and Yumi were mentioning before the episode started that we really liked the character animations and their personalities. Yeah. When you come to them. They like are happy getting chosen if you pass them up. They get mad. It's hilarious. Yeah. And I love it. And how they're trying to persuade you in the background to pick them because of their various traits. Like Diddy's like, look, I'm pretty strong. I'm pretty fast. <laughs> like, he's like, I've got long arms. And Tiny's just like, oh, I'm tiny. <laughs> pick so me. pick me. <laughs> <laughs> DK's just like, seriously? Okay, so we're going to need Diddy for this part. Oh, uh, this part is decently hard. I You're think. Diddy, so. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You oh. got to go find a jetpack barrel thing. And I've got to go up there and do what? You got to go up and hit a switch, and then you got to do a little deed, and then the switches will appear. Oh, I got to do a deed. Yes, a special feeding deed. Indeed. Indeed, yes. Um, I've been playing Pikmin a lot this week, Pikmin 2, yeah. more specifically, so these controls are a bit foreign to me right now. If you play another game for long enough, it's the same with an instrument. If you play bass guitar, all of a sudden you forget how to play ukulele for a few minutes. Uh -huh. It's really weird. Okay, so I am now Diddy Kong. Go to the top of that five uh, tower. The, the, uh, not the llama tower. No, we already did that. I oh, mean, there's one of the lanky's banana tiny bunches. Mechanical. And tinies. We gotta look for those. So, uh, we're gonna go up here, and then we're gonna go like... The... Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. sorry, sorry. There we go. Here we go. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah, the sun was... beamed in there. Okay. Did I... he just burp? No, he said, feed me. Wow. So let's go feed him. He I mean, didn't say if... what to feed him, though. And he didn't ask very nice. Yeah, but if a thing like that said, <laughs> feed me, would you I say, don't... you got to say please? <laughs> no, I would say, why are you talking to me, dude? You're not supposed to be alive. Uh, well, he's going to help us, so we should help him. Okay. Because that's Yumi's a good reasons. Policy. No, no, no. <laughs> No. Okay, I just fell through a leaf. Okay. How do you... Uh, I gotta take my guns out. It's kind of like these are there the C go. buttons now, so yeah. Okay, yeah. So then I gotta... There we go. Okay, now we and must... Like, All right! I hope he likes peanuts, because that's what he's getting. I hope he doesn't have an allergy got. or anything. I've got an allergy to peanuts. I don't know if you guys knew Ooh. that. I guess and he gets he's faster okay. each time, by the way. Unless that's an allergic reaction, I guess that's okay. Yeah. He's very uh, reminiscent of uh, Juju. Yeah. In... Um, Banjo Kazooie. Only he likes eggs. I've only got a certain amount of shots, by the way. So I can't afford to miss too many of these. There we go. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I cannot afford to miss this one. I'm gonna about right about there with that one. Good job. Oh, man. So just a little bit earlier, as soon as his face turns, like right there. Booyah! Okay. Thanks for that burp rare. That's, that's really nice. There we go. You're one to talk. <laughs> I did it I did it before the episode this time, guys. I got all my burps. We no longer record on Monday nights when I have spaghetti, so. Um, anyway. 
All right, it's uh, time now what do I for do? Donkey Kong. I guess we decided we were gonna finish him up. Oh yeah, okay. And that's you. I'm gonna let you do it because I got some tales to tell. Because actually, either of us trade yeah. off being Donkey Kong, but this time this I time guess... Yumjis because ah. guess what? I got a tale to tell. I I told you. This is an exciting episode. I like this episode. <laughs> so exciting. It's really exciting. Ah! <laughs> like this! Like falling, like sliding down on your tush into warm <laughs> sand is what this episode is. Only it's not so warm, it's hot and burns! That was a Ganon reference. Yeah, look at that face. It inspires it. Yeah, that was kind of like a Ganon <laughs> face. Okay, so I'm gonna read you a, a tale. Well, I shoot my coconut gun. I can fire in spurts. And if it shoots you. Is it gonna hurt? Yes. Okay. I'm not gonna go the rest of the way. But <laughs> I'm, I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna read you a, a, a freaky tale for a freaky palace. I want you to go through this really slowly and creepily. See this? Just, just hang here for a second with this creepy music. <laughs> Stop moving. Stop. <laughs> okay. Is this creepy enough for y'all? I think I've set the mood. I think it's creepy. Ladies and gentlemen, a diary entry from Flash Flare and J Juice. <laughs> there, <laughs> from Flash Flare, in on May thirteenth, two thousand eleven, was when I wrote this. And the diary entry begins. Hey, it was written at one p.m. I even included the time I wrote it. Hey, this is creepy, isn't it? Description of the day. Wow, it's been a long time since I've written here. Almost a year. <laughs> I, said, I, said, I, was, I was referencing my journal. Well, a lot of things have happened since then. For one, I'm almost 14. That's cool. Wink face. <laughs> Flash, you're creepy. Don't do that, wink face. This is the age of emojis and diaries. That's one emojis. Oh, sorry, journals. Yeah, journals. Listen. <laughs> you ready? It's about to get creepier. I'm getting a lot more into yo-yo games and Game Maker now. <gasps> Why, you ask? Because I finished school yesterday. You know when you finish school on May 12th that you're a homeschooler. You can yep. get it done a month early because you feel like it. Because mm -hmm. you just binge on your, like, um, books. And you can get down, like, however many pages a day you want. I got done in September, not some wait. I got done in, um, it was like February or something. It was like really early on in the year. Anyway, that's beside the point and it's not creepy enough. <laughs> um, that was awesome. Finished way early this year. Right now in Game Maker, I'm working on Super VG Paint. It's a video game painting program, which I, I did make an entire video game painting program and the kids, the daycare kids, they loved it. Yeah, it was cool. It was kind of like a little sticker thing. Yeah, it was like it was like MS Paint with Mario stickers, and I yeah. programmed it myself. And I was, Donkey Kong. I was very proud of it. Um, I've been working on and off of it for a few months now, and I think it's looking good. Here we go, you guys. You ready? This is where it gets real. <laughs> <laughs> Today, a freaky thing happened. It's so good. <laughs> we were out on a walk with the kids. In parentheses, like it was like seventy degrees. And we were about three blocks away from our house. Not freaky, right? Well, there's a big tree that stands right by the road that we were walking on. We were about 30 feet away from this tree. It, maybe even closer at this point. It was a pretty freaky tree, guys. Yeah, it was a freaky tree. <laughs> All of a sudden, there was a snap. <gasps> and the 50-foot tree came down on a house 30 feet away from us. Now, th guys, this was like a thick, huge oak tree. 50 feet may have been an understatement. That thing snapped, and we were standing right on the same road as it. It fell the other way, and it smashed a house right next to us. I think we were, like, across on the other side of the road. Yeah. It wasn't like we were so close, Not, but... It was 30 feet away. It was still pretty close to see something like that. And right when we walked past it. Yeah. And, um... No one was hurt, I don't think. But the dog in that house was going crazy. <laughs> yeah. There was a dog in the yard, and it was like... <laughs> <laughs> it was just like... It, it wasn't near the tree, per se, but it was, like, freaking It's out. like a tree just crushed my house. <laughs> you know when that happens. <laughs> Thank you.
Uh, it also brought down a power line um, that we had to go under. Because it, like, draped across the road and it, like, fell down on the other side, so we had to, like, go under it very carefully. Um, but we just walked under it. That was back to the journal. Um, and then I just, like, stopped the tale right there and I, I started talking about The Biggest Loser, which was a show I was really into at the time. <laughs> and I was, I was very mad about Austin going home, because apparently I really liked Austin. I don't remember much of Austin now, but I really liked him. <laughs> okay. And, uh, Dad's birthday is in a few days, and I still don't know what to get him. He's just that kind of person. He is. He is. That's the thing. If you guys have any ideas on what to get our dad, just comment below. Okay. It might help, like, me six years ago. <laughs> so, now what time is it? Overview time. I used to do overviews of the day. Uh, P.S. The air conditioning came on yesterday. That's a big moment. I was a really... I used to, like, have this unhealthy upset. <laughs> unhealthy upset. <laughs> <laughs> I, used to have, I used to have this unhealthy obsession with the air conditioning and I would literally lie in front of it with my mouth open <laughs> and I would like I would do that a lot and the first day it came out of the year like the first day of summer I would freak and I would love it so this episode is getting a bit long I have one more tale to tell you but Yumi's got to get on with the creepy part of this episode I don't know what's going to happen I'm going to try to get one more tale in DK here DK might be okay uh, what? Zoom out of there. What? What just happened? <gasps> wow. The walls opened, and there are clap traps, and there are things with googly eyes. Look at that. Ooh. I think that's their nose. No, no, no. Their nose no, yeah, is no, down no, no, there. No. Their teeth. Their eyes are just, oh, like, yeah. bugging out. Ooh. Yeah, okay, okay. I get it now. So, what's... Which path should I take? Oh, good. It literally yes. is Friday. Today. Okay. You hear that? That's clobber carnage. Mm. And those are their eyes. Because that's rare wear. Yeah. Um, so this was not the right way. Well, Yumi goes through some creepy antics. I'm going to tell you one more journey journey from my entral. We'll just ignore that. <laughs> oh! Uh, uh, you that get your orange bombs out, there boy. Go. Boy. Hey, go fetch, boy. Go fetch. <laughs> go fetch. Oh! <laughs> okay. There we go. So, uh, this is another creepy tale. This thing actually happened to me that was decently creepy. Um, and I was scared when this happened. So basically, we, uh, our family used to have these, um, flip phones. We, we didn't get a smartphone until just last year, and still we only have one. I thought we got it this, like, a couple months ago. It was some, sometime very recently. Uh, but before that we always had track phones, they called them. These, uh, flip phones, and, uh, they were just like, they looked really old and junky. But anyway, uh, one of them... Oh, there we go. Okay. Now remember uh, the way you came. Go this way. Remember the way you came, because you're gonna need it. Um, and let me tell the, f let me finish the tale, and then you can go out, and then we can finish the episode. Um... Okay, just take this dude out. He was making a chomp-chomp sound with no... Just skip him. Skip him. You're wasting your oranges. You're wasting your vitamin C. Ah! Okay, I'm sorry for screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Scared me so one. bad. He was on our tails. Okay, remember which way you came. I think it's gonna be okay for Deke. No, just w hang on here. Early. I'm gonna tell the rest of my tale. Okay. Now, we had this flip phone. One of them deactivated because the service plane ran out. And um, so dad was in the habit of like taking the, he would deactivate the phone. And um, he would like give it to kids. Uh, to play with and it would make the beep beep boop sounds and it would turn on and everything But it wouldn't be active. You couldn't make any calls on it So what he did was he gave it to me and there was this little girl called Lily at the time and she's like a teenager now So is she a teenager? She's almost a teenager. She's like 12. I guess. Anyway, she was like four or five at the time uh, Wait, she was six because this was on June 23rd 2011 at 1249 p.m. Uh, and uh <laughs> He gave us the phone, and we're like, let's go play with our new phone, because I was into playing with kids, and I was just like, let's have a fun game. Let's let's play a game where I, um, I, we, uh, get into trouble, and we call people on the phone. So I was like, okay. So we started calling these random people and making up numbers, and we were just like, yo, we're in trouble. And then, uh, I got a bright idea. I was like, there was like this creepy guy following us in our imagination in the basement, and I was just like, okay, guess what? We gotta call 911. So I take out the phone, I whip out the phone, and I'm just like, Ow. I'm just like, I gotta call 911. So I dial 911 and I press talk. And the dial, to, the, the, the ringing starts and I'm just like, 
what? And, <laughs> and then on the other side, I hear, 911, what is your emergency? And, and I was like, <sighs> she could probably hear like breathing as I was like, my eyes were bugging out. Because a kid accidentally calling 911, that's creepy. Because you know you're going to get in big trouble if they find out. Mm -hmm. So right away, I was like fumbling around with the phone and I just like mashed the off button and like <laughs> it was off and like I was just like, I, they're gone. They hung up. And I was like, I'm going to get arrested. Because <laughs> kids, you know, they will. And that day, Flash learned that even a deactivated phone can still call 911. That was the whole moral of the story. I went up and told my dad, I'm like, why you said it was deactivated? He's like, deactivated phones call 911 for safety precautions because <laughs> people who need to grab a phone, you know. Yeah. Ah. Uh, so that happened. 911 never did get back with me. Um, I think you cannot track a deactivated phone is one thing. So they did not know where the call was coming from. Uh, which is why they didn't follow through and try to figure out like if it was an emergency or not. Mm -hmm. um, don't do that, kids. Don't prank call 911. That was a serious accident, and I will never do it again. Now, on with the creepy episode. Let's get this bambana. Donkey Kong. Yeah. Get out. Oh, oh get is. out. There's a target on you, and he said get out. I hate this. I thought, this is creepy. I thought it didn't happen with Donkey Kong. Okay. Car, but it now does. listen, we, we went to the left. They're back, they're back. Okay, and if you get hit, it's over. That's all your health. I don't think so. Yes. But we're up. Okay, good, good, good. Now, an interesting thing is that's the same voice that the Feed Me guy used. Oh, hey, did he turn on us? I think he might have. That's rather ominous. Sometimes a door closes in life, but ah. another door will always open. And sometimes you burn so, your toe. So, as Yumi gets bombed and sniped by mysterious voices. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. It went a little bit long, but we got a lot of tales in. Thank you so much for watching. We will continue to give you updates on our life. Uh, and we are going to see you guys in the next episode. See you guys then. See ya.